So we're doing the 2015 AP Computer Science Test question three. Um, before I do this, uh, I want to just step back and talk about sparse array in general. This question is about sparse arrays, uh, and you don't have to know uh, how to implement them because they implement them for you a little bit. Uh, but uh, I want to just uh, talk about these things because they are very useful, and you should get an, you should know um, how they work. Uh, at least a little bit. So let me step back here. Um, so the basic idea is that you have uh, a basic problem. So you have a two-dimensional array, right, of numbers uh, zero, one, seven, two, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, two, one, one, etc. And so you would represent this as this is an array of uh, two-dimensional array or matrix of integers. You would represent that as a two-dimensional integer array, typically in Java, right? Two bracket bracket. Uh, so that's awesome. That works. It's great. Uh, and uh, so if we can say, you know, this is A, right? So int, int, int array A. And, you know, we define that. Then I can say A of 5. Uh, 7 equals whatever, 10. So I can put stuff in that two-dimensional array. The thing is, the way uh, an array works is it's going to use up this much space. So if we define a two-dimensional array uh, of uh, 10 by 10, it's going to use 10 by 10 or 100 uh, integers in memory. Um, which is fine, so that's not a problem, right? But what if it was, you know, uh, 10,000 uh, by 10,000. So then it starts to get big. And maybe you can't fit that into memory, right? Or maybe it's 100,000, or maybe it's a million. So as it gets big, you know, you just can't fit it into memory. But maybe, you know, and this happens again very often, uh, maybe your array is mostly zeros. Like maybe it's a picture that's mostly black and or white or whatever. And uh, so maybe, or it's a map of something that, you know, has just mostly empty and every now and then, ooh, there's a seven. Ooh, and then zero, 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 zero. And this is, happens very often. And you, you know, and it's very big, it's like 10 million, like 10,000. Uh, and uh, you want to be able to store that, but, you know, all these zeros, it's like, uh, I don't want to create this whole big, you know, just zero out all my memory. Uh, I want some other way of storing this array such that I only store the things that I need. And that's called a sparse array, right? Uh, which is that, what they implement here. So how is a sparse array implemented? Basically, uh, you keep, uh, come back here, uh, where's the example? If you look at their example right here, and the way they this sparse array is implemented, and then, which is the same way it is always implemented, usually, uh, is uh, as follows. You're just going to store, you're going to have a list here of the values, right? So this value 4 here, right? Uh, this is going here. So I have this value 4 is in row 1 column four, so row one, column four, value four. This value one is this one here, which is in row two, column zero, row two, column zero. You see, so I just store all the ones and uh, all the non-zero elements, and of course I have to store the row and column, uh, just so I know where they are, and, uh, and that's it, and so if, there is nothing, if, you know, I look for something, if I ask you, okay, give me what's at zero, zero here, uh, I'm going to look through this one, this one, no, it's not, no, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there, so therefore it must be zero, right? And uh, similarly, if I ask you for zero, two, I'm going to look through, and if it's not there, then it's zero. Uh, if I, if on the other hand, if I ask you for three, one, I'm going to look through this one, this one, this one. Then when I get here, I say, oh, row three, column one, found it. The value is negative one. So I'm going to tell you that. So that's how a sparse array is implemented. And this, that's actually what the question 
for uh, a which we're doing now it's uh, asking us to do so um, getting back to uh, here the first thing we have to implement is this complete a method get value at and uh, the get value method is going to ask us to um, I give it a row and a column and uh, I need to return the value. So let's go look back at our code. So I already inserted all the code and typed in all the code that they gave us uh, in, the, in the question, right? So all this stuff has been typed in already and let's just go over it quickly. So we have uh, the entry. The entry contains the row and the column for the entry and the value. And then just this getters that don't do much in the constructor that just said to the rows and columns so the entry is it's just it's a very basic data structure uh, the array uh, it's a little more complicated it has this total number of rows and number of columns which is you know how big the whole array is and then it has this entries list right so and this entries here corresponds to uh, this list we saw before right right here so entries here is this list of the entries the entry is a row and column are these little boxes in here the entries is the whole list as that so our constructor which they gave us again uh, i just create a new array list of sparse array entries and it's empty uh, I also created this add method uh, that's not in the thing, but that was for testing. Uh, and then they give us this get row, get num rows, or get num columns, which don't do much. What they're asking us to do is then we have to implement the get value add. So public int get value add row and column. Public int get value add int row int column. And uh, like I said, I mean, what do you need to do is, should be pretty obvious. Um, we're going to go through the entries and check, is this the wrong column? If it is, I'm going to return the value. If it's not, uh, when I get to the end, I'm going to say, oh, couldn't find it. I'm going to return a zero. Uh, now, like it says here, if there's no entry and entries correspond to this variable, a zero is return. And the other thing to note is they're telling us as a precondition that the row is going to be smaller than get num rows. So we don't have to worry about this means that this has to be true when they before they call us. That's why it's precondition. So I don't have to worry about column being bigger than the actual number of columns in the array. Uh, in which case, you know, we might want to throw an exception or return. Well, I think we pretty much have to throw an exception because we can return a number because they might think that's the number in that cell. Um, so anyway, uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go through entries. To go through the entries, we need a for loop. So for each sparse array entry, entry in entries plural. Uh, if entry dot get row is row and entry dot get column uh, get column is equal to the column so found it um, I'm gonna return entry dot get value then otherwise if I go through the whole entries all of the entries are not matched and because I don't have to worry about the, these rows and columns being outside the scope or you know being bigger than num rows, uh, I know that it's going to be a zero. Return zero, and uh, I think that's about it. So over here, I already put in. I created this uh, add function also, which you can see over here, uh, right there, and uh, it's just going to add things in the array so I can test it. So I added those and uh, let's just array dot get value add, you know, one, four should return four and uh, get value add 
of one comma one that should return zero right and let's just run that run 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 so oh no one one returns five huh? <laughs> uh anyone that returns zero uh well two shit so one one comma three that's the zero like, run that zero okay so looks like everything works 